Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, and a special welcome to those joining us via the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM. Today is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is His Excellency Archbishop Jose Gomez. Before we begin our Mass, please take this moment to silence your cell phones and any other electronic device. Thank you. Our opening hymn is number 651, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Please stand and sing hymn 651. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Amen. Today we have the uh, special joy of having uh, Deacon Michael Mesa, 
who was ordained a transitional deacon yesterday. So congratulations. He was ordained uh, uh, to, uh, together with another six young men who are transitional deacons for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and they all were ordained priests by the grace of God uh, May, 30, May 30th next year. So please continue to pray for uh, Deacon Michael and also for all the deacons, the transitional deacons, as they prepare for the ordination to the, their priest, the, to the ordination for the priesthood next year. So today the church is uh, once again asking us to reflect on the beauty of our faith and setting the goal of our life in going to heaven. So let's especially ask for that grace that today we renew our commitment to be faithful to God's love and also to love one another. Let's start our celebration acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <coughs> the night before the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers that with sure knowledge of the oath in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine instruction. The word of the Lord. Said the people, the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people, the Lord has chosen to be his own. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Bless to the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Bless the people. of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death, and preserve them in spite of famine. soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with fountains, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received the power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it from afar and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had an opportunity to return. But now they desired a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself and have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have had let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property, but if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, to eat and get drunk, on an unexpected hour, on an unexpected day, his masters will come and punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant, who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Growing up, one of my favorite movies as a kid was The Lion King. And so naturally, I was very excited when uh, just a, almost less than a month ago, The Lion King came out in theaters, uh, fully remastered. And it was okay. <laughs> I prefer the original. But they changed one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. And in this scene, in the original, this is where Simba is going back and forth, uh, kind of con internally conflicted, because he's not sure whether he should go home to Pride Rock and face his uncle Scar and, you know, reclaim his, his place as king of, of the kingdom and, and really just face his past. And so he's, he's kind of not sure what to do. And then Rafiki comes and, you know, he's kind of pestering him and, he's, and Rafiki calls him out. He says, you know, you don't even know who you are. And Simba says, oh, and you do? He said, yep, sure do. You're Mufasa's boy. You're the son of the king. 
and then they go on this chase through the forest, and then eventually Simba finds himself at this pool where he sees the image of his father reflected in him, but then the spirit of Mufasa comes rolling in on the thunder clouds. And it's a very biblical image, by the way. And it's my favorite line, you hear that wonderful deep voice, Simba, Simba. I say, Father, is that you? Simba, you have forgotten me. You have forgotten who you are, and so you have forgotten me. Look inside yourself. You're more than what you have become. You must go take your place in the circle of life. You see, in neglecting his responsibilities, in neglecting his, his call as the son's king, Simba forgot what his father had taught him. He forgot what his father was about, and in doing so, he forgot who he himself was. And it's this theme of remembrance and remembering who we are as a people that we see being brought out in today's readings. In our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we hear about the Israelites. They're preparing for the Passover, and so they recall, it says, sure knowledge of the oath which they put their faith in God. And it's this sure knowledge that they know who they were as God's people. They knew God is faithful. And then a little bit of context about the Book of Wisdom is that it's not the Book of Exodus, it's, which is more narrative. The Book of Wisdom was written much later for a people as a guidance for wise living. And so we see that the Israelites, looking back at their forefathers in Exodus, are seeing this example as how they should live. They should remember that they are God's people, that they are part of the covenant. And then as we hear at the end of the second reading, they offered sacrifice, putting into effect the divine institution. So not only remembering that they were God's people, blessed the people whom God has chosen to call his own, as our responsorial psalm says, but they put that faith, their faith in God's covenantal love and fidelity into practice. And then we hear in our second reading, the author to the Hebrews gives us a beautiful account of what is faith. He says, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. I mean, to realize something, you have to, you have to know about it. And so the realization of what is hoped for I mean, even us today sometimes, do we know what we are hoping for? Do we know why we're here? And, and, and who is our hope? And then the author to the Hebrews goes on to give the account of Abraham, our father in faith, who used the realization of who he was and to whom he belonged, God's covenant fidelity to him, to then carry him throughout his life. All the trials, God asking him to sacrifice his son Isaac, and then going out into the promised land, not knowing where he's going, and this faith brought Abraham throughout his life to realize that he is a sojourner on this earth and his home is not here, but with God. And the danger for us sometimes as a people is that we can forget who we are and where we are going. Like Simba, we can sometimes begin to buy into the lies of society, whether because of hurts or, or distress or whatever is plaguing us in our life, we can try to bury that and just forget about who we are. We can believe in the lie, the uh, akuna matata, it means no worries. It's our problem-free philosophy. <laughs> but no worries, are you kidding me? Just turn on the TV and you'll realize that our world, there are many worries. Our world is in pain. Our world is in suffering, and too often we try to pretend like nothing is wrong. We have forgotten who we are as a people. Western civilization as we know it was built on the foundation of Christianity, and today we try to pretend like Christianity has nothing to do with society. And it's beautiful how in the original Lion King, Simba's pacing back and forth, and he's internally conflicted precisely because he has forgotten who he is as the sons, as the son of the king. And then he, realizing that and accepting who he is, he's able to go back and face his destiny. And this brings to mind one of the, 
uh, something that St. Leo the Great, one of the greatest popes, one of the greatest saints we have in our church, has said. In his homily to Christians uh, around Christmas time, at their baptism, he says, Christians, remember your dignity. Remember your dignity, that you have been brought out of darkness into the kingdom of light. Remember who you are. And it is this faith-filled and active remembrance of who we are that allows us to be the faithful and prudent stewards that Jesus is talking about in our gospel today. Sometimes we think that being faith-filled and actively attentive is kind of like waiting, <laughs> waiting for God, the police officer, to find us as we're speeding and say, oh, caught you. Or it's like, oh, God's waiting for us just to trip up and do something wrong so you could say, oops, sorry, you're not my servant. But the vigilance Jesus is speaking about in today's gospel is more than that. It's actually more about our internal disposition in remembering who we are. Faith is a realization of what is hoped for, an evidence of things not seen. The realization and remembrance of who we are as God's people. And our readings today speak of this powerful fact that by placing God and God's kingdom at the center of our life, everything else begins to fall into place. Everything else begins to make sense. And then as Jesus shows us the parable, at the end of the parable, the master returning and finding his servants vigilant and prepared, he then has them wait and recline, and he proceeds to wait on them at table. And this is a beautiful example of what happens every time we come to Mass in the Eucharist. We hear our readings, reminding us who we are as God's people. And then we bring the entirety of our life to the altar, offering it to God, and he himself takes that, blesses it, and gives it to us in his very body and blood, the Eucharist, to nourish and strengthen us as his people, God himself. And so as we prayed at the very beginning of Mass in our collect, we prayed to be able to remember to call God our Father, but that he may increase in us that spirit of adoption as sons and daughters of the King, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance promised to us, eternal life and salvation with God. And so, Christians, today, this week, this year, for the rest of your life, remember your dignity. Remember who you are. Please stand for a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, having heard God's word, we have the confident assurance of faith to present our needs to the Lord. That the church may be blessed with continued zeal to spread the gospel to every part of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may be active and informed citizens and participate responsibly in shaping public policy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our local bishops and priests, as they prepare to gather in convocation, that they may be filled with the faith of Abraham to venture into the unknown with confidence that God will guide and illuminate their path, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the lonely, and those whose rights are neglected, for these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find mercy and the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we trust in your grace and rejoice in your word. Answer our prayers and keep us faithful to you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Today's gospel urges us to give generously and thus build up treasure in heaven. For wherever your treasure lies, there your heart will be. Please take a moment now to reflect on the blessings of this week and prepare our gifts. I now ask the ushers to pass the baskets. Thank you for your generosity.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just, our dear and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he was freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your might, mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and, domin thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. in the Holy Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit that graciously made holy these gifts, and brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wonderful resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose aid you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Viviana, and with all the saints, whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof. Only say the word my soul shall be here. May the body of Christ give me safe for eternal life. Our communion hymn is number 758, I Has Not Seen, number 758.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have, we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. Good morning. I have several announcements today. First of all, this Thursday, August 15th, is the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is a holy day of obligation. Masses will be celebrated here at the Cathedral on Wednesday, August 14th, with a Vigil Mass at 5.15 p.m., and on Thursday, August 15th, at 7 a.m. and 12.10 p.m. All are invited to join us for the annual Our Lady of the Angels Votive Mass on Saturday, August 24th at 3 p.m. Following the celebration of the Eucharist, there will be a rosary procession in the Cathedral Plaza. The Cathedral is exhibiting works by the artist John August Swanson until the end of September, and everyone is invited to a special presentation titled Faith, Art, and Justice with the renowned artist John August Swanson, accompanied by Claudia Avila Kosnahan, our Director of Evangelization on August 27th. For more information regarding these Eucharistic celebrations and events, I invite you to please take home a copy of the bulletin for the month of August. At this time, we now have a special announcement from one of our families who are members of the Cathedral's Family Faith Formation Ministry. Good morning. Hello, families and members of our church. Uh, we are the Garfio family, and I am Cesar Garfio. I am Caesar's wife, Elizabeth. This is my daughter, Isabella, and my son, Logan. We are very happy to be here with all of you on this beautiful day. Isabella. Hi, I'm Isabella. Our family joined Family Faith Formation last year, and we participated in the 2018 and 19 catechism classes. This will be our second ministry year in family faith formation. This is a wonderful ministry designed to help families grow and together in faith. The lessons target Catholic issues and topics directly relevant to parents and children. This program helps bring awareness of God sense of purpose and a deeper meaning of into our family our lives. Hi, I'm Logan. Family Faith Formation has really made us think about our family's purpose in this family in this world. As a family, we decided that our family purpose is to help each other be better people and get to heaven. We also learned that it is equally to help everyone. What, a, what about you and your family? Do you know the purpose? Uh, hi. Um, the Garfield family and I would like to formally invite all young families to join us in the Family Faith Formation Ministry. If you have little ones in grades 1 to 5, Isabella and Logan would love to see them. If you're interested, please don't hesitate and get more information at the tables outside. The main doors to our left. There will be an orientation session on August 25th, and you register today or online. We hope to see you. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. As pastor, I'd just like to take this opportunity to congratulate Deacon Michael Mesa, who was ordained, as you know, yesterday as a deacon. <laughs> deacon Michael is a member of the parish of the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, and with God's grace, in about nine months, I believe, the last Saturday of May, he will be ordained a priest of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. So I invite you to join me in praying for him over the next few months, because this is his home parish. He's been assigned to the cathedral this next school year. So once a month on his weekend home, he will be assisting at the masses as a deacon, preaching, and also celebrating the sacrament of baptism. So we again congratulate you and we pray for you, Deacon Michael, and may God continue to send his spirit upon you. Congratulations once again. And I also think it's important to thank his parents. So Mr. and Mrs. Mace, I invite you to please stand. And so thank you for your love and support of Michael. And now, as we always do here at the cathedral, I invite anyone who visits today for the very first time, if you would please stand so we can extend a special welcome to you. So welcome to the cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Please stand for the final blessing. So let's keep reflecting on the beautiful mission of today's liturgy, especially uh, reflecting on who we are and what is the purpose of our life and setting the goal of our life in going to heaven. As always, I invite you to join us in singing the Sable Regina, uh, asking our Blessed Mother for her intercession for more vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gift of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life journey you may be effective in good works, reaching the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our celebration has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Salve Regina can be found in your hymn book, number 894, number 894. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita du cedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, ex voles fili hebe. A te suspiramus, et mentes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, Advocata nostra, ilos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. E Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tuis, nobis pocos et zilium, o sen. Closing hymn is number 723, We Walk by Faith, number 723.
We walk by faith and not by sight. 